The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams Illustrated by Teen The Velveteen Rabbit, or How Toys Become Real. <laughs> Fluffy. I'm going to read a book, Fluffy. See if Fluffy lets me change the pages. You stay there, Fluffy, and listen to the story. It was a bright, sunny morning, and the windows stood wide open. They had carried the boy out onto the balcony, wrapped in a shawl, and the little rabbit lay tangled among the bedclothes, thinking. The boy was going to the seaside tomorrow. Everything was arranged, and now it only remained to carry out the doctor's orders. They talked about it all, while the little rabbit lay under the bedclothes, with just his head peeping out and listened. The room was to be disinfected, and all the books and toys that the boy had played with in his bed must be burnt. Hooray, thought the little rabbit. Tomorrow we shall go to the seaside, for the boy had often talked of the seaside, 
and he wanted very much to see the big waves coming in and the tiny crabs and the sandcastles. Just then, Nana caught sight of him. How about his old bunny? She asked. That, said the doctor, why it's a mass of scarlet fever and germs. Burn it at once. Get him a new one. He mustn't have that anymore. And so the little rabbit was put into a sack with the old picture books and a lot of rubbish and carried out to the end of the garden behind the fowl house. That was a fine place to make a bonfire, only the gardener was too busy just then to attend to it. He had potatoes to dig and green peas to gather, but the next morning he promised to come quite early and burn the whole lot. That night the boy slept in a different bedroom, and he had a new bunny to sleep with him. It was a splendid bunny, all white plush with real glass eyes, but the boy was too excited to care too much about it. For tomorrow he was going to the seaside, and that in itself was such a wonderful thing he couldn't think of anything else. And while the little boy was asleep, dreaming of the seaside, the little rabbit lay among the old picture books in the corner behind the fowl house. He felt very lonely. The sack had been left untied, so by wriggling it a bit, he was able to get his head through the opening and look out. He was shivering for a little, for he always had been used to sleeping in a proper bed and by this time the coat had worn so thin and threadbare from hugging it that it was no longer any protection for him. Near and by he could see the thicket of raspberry canes growing tall and close like a tropical jungle, in whose shadow he had played with the boy on bygone mornings. He thought of those long sunlit hours in the garden, how happy they were, and a great sadness came over him. He seemed to see them all pass before him, each more beautiful than the other. The fairy huts in the flower bed, the quiet evenings in the wood when he lay in the bracken and the little ants ran over his paws. The wonderful day when he first knew that he was real. He thought of that skin horse, so wise and gentle, and all that he had told of him of what used to be loved and lose one's beauty and become real if it all ended like this. And a tear, a real tear, trickled down his little shabby velvet nose and fell to the ground. And then a strange thing happened, for where the tear had fallen, a flower grew out of the ground, a mysterious flower, not like that any grew in the garden. It had a slender green leaf color of emeralds, and in the center of the leaves a blossom like a golden cup. It was so beautiful that the little rabbit forgot to cry and just lay there watching it. And presently the blossom opened, and out of it stepped a fairy. She was quite the loveliest fairy in the whole world. Her dress was of pearl and dewdrops, And there were flowers round her neck and in her, in her hair, and her face was like the most perfect flower of all. She came close to the little rabbit and gathered him up in her arms and kissed him on his velveteen nose that was all damp from crying. Little rabbit, she said, don't you know who I am? The rabbit looked up at her, and it seemed to him that he had seen her face before, but couldn't think where. I am the nursery magic fairy, she said. I take care of all the old playthings that the children had loved, 
when they were old and worn out. And the children don't need them anymore. Then I come to take them away with me and turn them into real. Wasn't I real before? asked the little rabbit. You were real to the boy, the fairy said, because he loved you. Now you shall be real to everyone. And she held the little rabbit close in her arms and flew him into the wood. It was light now, for the moon had risen, and all the forest was beautiful, and the fronds of the bracken shone like frosted silver. In the open glade between, between the tree trunks and the wild rabbits, danced with their shadows on the velvet grass. But when they saw the fairy, they all stopped dancing and stood round in a ring to stare at her. you a new playfellow, the fairy said. You must be very kind to him. Teach him all his needs to know in rabbit land, for he was going to live with you forever and ever. And she kissed the little rabbit again and put him down on the grass. Run and play, little rabbit, she said. But the rabbit sat still for a moment and never moved. For when he saw all the wild rabbits dancing around, he suddenly remembered about his hind legs, and he didn't want them to see that he was made all in one piece. He did not know that when the fairy kissed him the last time she had changed him all together, and he might have sat there for a long time, too shy to move, if just then something hadn't tickled his nose. And before he thought he knew what it was, he lifted his hind toe to scratch it. And he found that he actually had hind legs. Instead of dingy velveteen, he had brown fur, soft and shiny. His ears twitched by themselves, and his whiskers were so long that they brushed the glass. He gave one leap, and the joy of using those hind legs was so great that he went springing about the turf on them, jumping sideways and whirling round as the others did. He grew so excited that when at last he did stop to look for the fairy, she had gone. He was a real rabbit at last, at home with the other rabbits. Autumn passed, and winter, and in the spring, when the days grew warm and sunny, the boy went out to play in the wood behind the house. And while he was playing, two rabbits crept out from all over the bracken and peeped at him. One of them was brown all over, but the other had strange markings under his fur, as though long ago he had been spotted, but the pot spot still shone through and about his little soft nose and the round black eyes there was something familiar so that the boy thought to himself why he looks just like my old bunny that was lost when i had scarlet fever but he never knew that it was really his own bunny come back to look at the child who had first helped him to be real end.